Okay, I call this meeting for June the 6th, 2023 to order. Um, number two, result of the agenda for the June 6th, 2023 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, joining us tonight, we have our new uh, recreation director, Brian Mintenko. Did I say that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, welcome. And then on video, we have uh, our fire chief, uh, Mr. Fedorchuk, uh, CFO, CFO Garita, and Deputy Mayor Morio. And we have Councilor White, who is, and Councilor Medwood, who has not been able to attend tonight, and they had given um, notice. Result of the minutes of the May 16th, 2023 regular meeting, council meeting, and the May 23rd, 2023 special meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobek. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. All right, moving right down to communication 6.1. Result of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, letter dated May 23rd, invoice dated May 24th, and contract police monthly year-to-date report dated March 31st be received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.2. Resolved the invitation to the June 21st stakeholder meeting held by Prairie Mountain Health be received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? I'll just add that I believe that Deputy Mayor Morio has committed to this as well as myself. Um, we don't really need everybody to attend, but if there's anybody else that did want to, uh, it is open for that. So, so far, I think that's what we responded with. Okay. Yeah, I'll be working two hats at that meeting, but. Uh... Yeah. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 6.3. Result of the building permits 1423 through 2323 with a total estimated value of $2,978,000 be received. Moved by Councillor Wojciech, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7, 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, 7.2. Result of the May 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Van report be received. Moved by Councilor Bobic, second by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Reports. Uh, Council reports, I'll start with uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, not too much since I've been away for the last week or so, but on May 23rd, we had our regular meeting, the whole meeting um, where we reviewed uh, uh, proposed changes to the uh, procedures uh, bylaw for the council and had a special meeting where we uh, passed second and third reading to the special service uh, residential waste and recycling bylaw. And then on the 25th, uh, the emergency response committee, um, along with our EMO coordinator, uh, Mr. Linick and EMO did a tabletop exercise um, for a potential emergency in the community, and that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Powell. Um, not much to report either, um, just that we've been spending lots of time at the library. We've had three meetings and a couple of staff meetings in the last little while, so that's pretty much about <coughs> it. Okay, 
It's all right. Okay. Uh, Councillor Bobak. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, just not too much to report, just more questions, actually. Uh, just uh, some of it is in regards to the watershed. Uh, tomorrow, we have a water festival at the Interpreter Center halfway east of Wellman Lake there. We'll probably have, we'll be close to 200 students, grade four and five. We'll probably have somewhere between 10 and 12 stations of calls. We will give them, we have stream tables. There'll be people explaining about trapping, forestry, and all that. We do this every year. So if you happen to be driving up to Wellman Lake and want a hot dog, stop in. So, uh, just a question, wondering about uh, some of our ditches uh, when we mow uh, the grass and I know they're highway ditches, but we do build the highways for that, I take it, right? Not for the ditches, no. Because they would just leave it. So we do it anyway then? Yeah. So <coughs> I guess my thoughts on that are when our mower is going to the airport back and forth, could you not take a swipe out of that on the way? Just something you can maybe touch base with them. So maybe I'm out to lunch, it's too steep or something, but if you could let me know, it would be great. Uh, where are we with the apartment block uh, fit? I believe that's advertised and we are just waiting for it to be closed. And it closes so, when? Oh, I don't have the date on hand. If the fire chief knows the date that that RFP closes, I don't recall it's, the exact date. I, something tells I, I thought 15. the 14th, but... Okay, somewhere. That's this. It's coming. Yeah, okay. Uh, has there been any conversation, I call it the back alley, between 8th and 9th North there, between Cook and Cook and Scale Street there, about ripping that asphalt up and redoing it? Uh, hopefully at the next Cal meeting I'll have uh, um, a back lane paving fee for council to discuss. And then once we have that, then I can uh, go to the residents. Okay, that's what I'm getting at when. That, that won't happen until after we have that discussion. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, just a couple things on the landfill. Uh, I spoke with attendants out there on our harassment policies there. So where are we with harassment policies that pertain to the staff that's out there? Yeah, so they have, uh, like externally, if someone's harassing them, then it would be the same as our policy, like that harassment isn't tolerated. Uh, internally, if they had harassment amongst their own employees, they have to have their own policies for that. So there is an avenue for them right now if they have that harassment happens to them again that, that would end up back here at yeah. the town office. Okay, thank you. Uh, just on, there's also the ground that was brought there last year from Saskatchewan, I call it, uh, that was all flattened at level. Now I see they put some uh, mulch, I call it, on top of it. Was there th ever thoughts put in there, like seeding that? Like I'd yeah, always... There yeah. is a plan to seed that, yeah, just okay. to grass. Just to so not we'll somebody's dump mulch or <laughs> grinding all over it, so I guess. I'll be allowed to take a look at that. Okay, okay. Um, and the tank that's out there to hold water, we can put some water in it. Yeah. For the fire. <coughs> Just uh, food for thought for council. Uh, I've been talking with uh, CAO here a little bit about costs and stuff moving forward in the future of the town of Swan River. I think that council needs to look and maybe CAO Pool can give us a little bit more information. I'm sure he can on asphalt re uh, reclaimer. So these are machines that will take old asphalt and reheat them and then you can use them again. I'm going to roughly say they could make between 30 and 40 cubic yards a day, something like that, which has the cost of quite a bit of money now for patching. So I think it's something that we should move forward on. Uh, maybe not this year, but something we should be looking at. Uh, the availability of asphalt is getting tougher and tougher. Uh, with that smaller machine, we could do a lot of the small work, which costs a lot of money. When mm -hmm. the companies that come here do not want to do patching, it's the way they got nine men standing around there at the time. So anyway, it's something that we can move forward on maybe in the future. Crack ceiling, where would we be with that? Uh, we're having issues with the kind that we were using, so we're just uh, investigating a more rubberized type. So we'll be 
do like a little trial and then hopefully uh, full scale next year. And I, not that I know, but you have to be very careful because I don't think your, your tack machine will handle any rubber. I don't think you'll heat it on. Yeah, there was a specialized yeah. one for a specific yeah. unit. And uh, just one other thing, uh, we have giveaway weekend every mm -hmm. year here. Well, uh, just again, thoughts for council. I'd like to see, and this is my personal opinion, that there should be a day in the spring and a day in the fall that, you know what, our landfill's open and it's free of charge. Come and dump your stuff up. You're cleaning your yard up. And a lot of the yards are stuff that would have to go across the scale, but I'm leaning towards maybe later in this year making a resolution to forward that on. So just hang on, it's coming. And thank you. Okay. Pardon? Oh, sorry. I said thank you. Councilor <laughs> 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 uh, So, reiterating May 23rd, Committee of the Whole. Uh, May 25th, we had the EMO flooding table top exercise, which was very uh, educational. Uh, May 29th had a Swan Valley Planning District meeting. Uh, June 1st had Swan Valley uh, Legacy Committee meeting. And tomorrow, June 6th, is an emergency services day being held at the arena that was organized by uh, the uh, RCMP. I think Amanda Trumbly had headed that up mostly. So there's going to be all sorts of uh, schools attending from all over the valley and taking in. I think she's got fire, um, EMS, uh, the Rangers, RCMP, recruiting, a um, whole bunch of uh, different, I'm not sure who else. There are, but should be a big day. They're uh, cooking hot dogs and giving them out. Um, the other thing we had talked about too, and I kind of want to get it on an agenda or get more talking about it, is um, an updated uh, system for our booking scheduling um, within the town so that we can, every entity wherever we are is linked somehow. I don't know if there's a beast out there that can do that for us, but calendar uh, not so a calendar but like a like an actual system that uh, program that we can utilize that's designed for town cities operation they're out there we, well, we have one it's just extremely expensive <clears throat> be nice to get thinking about that for future so I think in the end it might be a little bit of money up front but save us in the back end long term yep yeah that's it for me. Okay, perfect. For me, uh, actually today uh, I was able to uh, attend the AMN's, uh, as director anyways, uh, the uh, resolution committee and uh, our resolutions that we had presented uh, were reviewed by the committee and uh, forwarded on to the uh, uh, Parklands district meeting in June, June 22nd. So. Uh, most of those will come forward. I'll go through some of those at a later time, but uh, and kind of go through the resolutions. But for the most part, uh, all our resolutions that we had, and some of them were kind of repeat ones as far as uh, the policing part goes, and we're very close in tune with uh, larger municipalities such as Dauphin and, and the Paw. So um, uh, we'll be be able to debate some of those uh, in, on uh, June the twenty second. Uh, just last week, uh, Director Poole and I had a chance to uh, meet up with the people from uh, Federal Justice uh, on some of the issues of crime in our area, and uh, most of the uh, conversation was around B, uh, sorry, Bill C-48, and this is the, uh, obviously the reforms to the, uh, the past legislation, which will make it uh, maybe a little bit more difficult for repeat offenders and, and taking into account um, uh, testimony from uh, people that are affected or, or uh, uh, communities that they can have some impact statements and so forth. So it was, it was a, a, a good discussion. I do appreciate Mr. Ferris for setting that up. He's uh, the regional advisor uh, from the Deputy uh, Pr uh, Prime Minister's office, but still uh, there's a lot of work and, and this bill hasn't even passed. And, and I don't know how long it's going to take to get passed because they're heading into summertime and who knows if that's ever going to even happen before they break for, for summer. But uh, hopefully that does happen. Um, and, well, and I actually told the, uh, uh, 
the uh, assistant there from Lametti's office that I said that uh, when she were breaking away and 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 uh, I said, well, you'll be hearing from us again. So she kind of laughed because I don't know if she thought that was going to be the last uh, conversation they were going to have with us. But I said uh, they'll be hearing from us uh, again very very soon. Um, last week was the uh, uh, deadline for nominations for the AMM. Uh, district representatives on the, on the board and uh, I was lucky enough to be re-elected so I'm looking forward to that. This one here is going to be a two-year term so uh, I'll be a, there till at least uh, uh, 2025. So looking forward to that and, and to the June district meeting as well and I think that we should be all uh, signed up for that already whoever's going to be attending that in Roblin. Yeah I can't Again, I just, I can't recall all the names of who is and who is. I know I can't make it. I have a doctor's appointment. Okay. And uh, with that, again, I want to welcome Director Mantenko to our team here in Swan River. Um, uh, you have, a, I realize, a, a lot of work ahead of you and, and learning, but we're looking forward to hearing what... Uh, you, what you have learned and uh, what you could bring forward and, and, uh, and having that dialogue. But right now I realize that you have a lot uh, on the table to learn, but uh, in time we will have these conversations and looking forward to it. Great, thank you. All right, that's good for me. Mr. Poole. I do have just a written down update on uh, what our office is working on. Just welcoming Brian to the team. We'll have our first council meeting tonight, first manager's meeting on Thursday. Uh, from council, I, just so you know, I'm still awaiting dates for a uh, meeting with Sapatoyak as well. Uh, Swan Valley West threw back at us for the fire board meeting, dates that we are available. So maybe I'll do that by email tomorrow, expect an email just for the availability of that board meeting. And at the next Cal meeting, uh, I'd like a couple representatives from council to be on an agreement committee for the for the negotiating of, with the legacy committee. So <clears throat> just looking for two or three reps from council. I'd like to be on that. For that. So I'll probably do that by email tomorrow as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and just another big item with my airport manager hat on. Uh, went through uh, the audit review with Wasco today. So the airport scored quite well, uh, nothing, no major safety issues in our operations. And the only issues that were really reported, and this will go to the airport commission, but it's good for the town to know, is, is, is really minor document, uh, just cleaning up documents compared to what is being done out there to what we say we're doing in our documents. So. If every down to the very last detail, it's very minute. So they they do look at what we do compared to what we say we do, and those were really the only things that they. There was a lot of them, but but they're all really minor. There's really nothing major. So we run a pretty tight ship out there. That's good for when the Transport Canada inspection actually comes. <clears throat> and that that's it. Okay, then shall we move on? 8, 8.1. Whereas the province of Manitoba Department of Transportation Infrastructure, MTI, has the responsibility to maintain the provincial trunk highways within town, cities, and municipalities, communities, including snow removal, and whereas the province, sorry, whereas the prov provincial government has encouraged towns, cities, and municipalities to perform the work of snow removal within their communities. And whereas MTI allows municipalities to enter into snow removal agreements for the complete or shared responsibility between the municipality and the province to provide snow removal at a desired level of service to the municipalities, to rate payers, and these agreements over time have been based on different models, including basket funding, equivalent water participation, precipitation, snowfall, etc. And whereas from time to time MTI agrees to, to, uh, agrees to small percentage increases in the amount of pro funding provided through the agreements, but it is evident that the cost to perform the work far exceeds the amount provided 
by the service agreements. Therefore, be it resolved, AMM lobby the provincial government to provide a step increase in funding to towns, cities, and municipalities who maintain the provincial trunk highways within their municipal limits through snow removal maintenance agreements and be it further resolved that AMM lobby MTI to perform a study and or act on providing a consistent measurable formula in the disbursement of these funds and further funds to municipalities performing the snow removal work on PTH highways within their municipal limits. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Whereas the province of Manitoba, the Workers' Compensation Act has recently been amended to include new types of cancer for uh, which presumptive, presumptive uh, coverage is available to firefighters and the Office of the Fire Commission personnel. And whereas this coverage for 19 different forms of cancer is setting an example for all other provinces to follow in the protect, pr protection of their firefighters. And whereas the Canadian Association of Fire Chiefs has recently created a cancer prevention committee to create a plan for promotion of best practices and the prevention of risk reduction strategies to minimize the pr probability of firefighters develop, de developing cancer. And whereas the Manitoba Association of Fire Chiefs continues to work with the Manitoba Office of the Fire Commissioner and the Workers' Compensation Board of Manitoba to perform a uniform reporting process where departments can maintain records of fires that their individual firefighters attend, which would include the information required for the presumptive legislation should they ever receive a cancer diagnostic diagnosis. And whereas a reference document has been developed for recommended physical physician lab and screening tests that will help identify these cancers and heart injury disease that are part of the, the areas of special consideration required due to the occupational risk associated with firefighting, which is greater than the public. And whereas the fees charged for current clinical examinations are not consistent throughout Manitoba, now, therefore, be it resolved that the AMM lobby the province of Manitoba on behalf of municipalities to create requirements for all fire departments to maintain such records and that the province of Manitoba provide necessary funding to municipalities to cover the cost of municipal firefighters to obtain medical examinations every two years to diagnose possible cancers as early as possible. Moved by... Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.3. Whereas the cost of all policing in Manitoba is taking up greater and greater amounts of municipal budgets, particularly in urban municipalities, and whereas the root causes of crime and therefore the need for policing are issues arising from failures in the system beyond the scope of municipal government such as mental health, addiction, and socioeconomic status, and whereas municipalities that serve as hubs for health and social services attract people in need of those services and then must address the negative outcomes when service, services fail to meet those needs. And whereas the municipal boundaries have absolutely no effect on the incidence of crime and whereas the current funding model for policing in Manitoba has not been materially changed in decades, no longer meets the needs of the realities of today and appropriately puts the burden on policing, the taxation of real property and whereas the province of Manitoba has undertaken an independent review of the legislation, leg legislative requirements to provide policing as well as the administration and distribution of provincial funding support for municipal police and therefore it be resolved that the AMM lobby the province of Manitoba to amend the Police Service Act to ensure that the model for funding policing for funding policing in Manitoba is equitable transparent and aligns to the allocations of costs with the capacity to pay and the jurisdiction responsibility over the root causes of crime 
Moved by Councilor Bob Wojcik, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion, Councilor Bobbitt. So that we are a co-sponsor co of this? Is that what I'm reading? Yeah. So where, is there gonna be another resolution to AMM on my question on double taxation? No. No, so would this address that? Um, you know, we'll, we'll have a chance to debate that at the June 22nd. Okay, right. yeah. And I think that if it, and I can't see it not moving forward, to be quite honest with you, I think that you can bring that up and I think it's valid, okay. but I think that also at, if it does make it to the fall convention and, and everybody has a chance to speak on the resolution, I think that's a prime opportunity for you even to add to okay, the, 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 the okay. comments of the resolution. Thank you. Okay. And that, um, I, I, think, I think the deputy mayor was next, so go ahead. Hey, um, yeah, I think that part of that question of well, Councilor Bobbitt was it's in the, the therefore is that um, policing in Manitoba is equitable. And so like, like we could take that as like the, um, the cost is equitable so that certain jurisdictions are not double taxed as to what you're suggesting. But I, but I, I do love the, the, the point that Councilor Bobbitt makes and I think it's, it's, it's valid and, I, and I, it would be interesting for people to be able to take that perspective so I really want to you know hold that uh, that card, uh, in, you know, and be able to present it when it's time to present it. Go ahead. So that question kind of was posed to the Office of Municipal uh, Affairs, and they forwarded it on to the Manitoba Justice Minister. So we still haven't heard back on like confirmation of that, but it's been asked just to confirm like we wanted to, but no response yet. I asked. Them. Your Worship, I asked the minister that when we had that meeting in May of last year, I think, was when we met with them? Yeah. Could no. be, I... I asked the question, the exact same question to him, and he, I, he answer. his answer was a good question. That could be why they're taking some time. <laughs> okay, so any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.4. Resolve that the Town of Swan River support and fund the Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce Community Safety Watch Program as per the attached proposal. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion. Councillor Deputy Mayor Moore. <coughs> Um, yes, um, I guess I would, I seen the, the initial proposal that, that the chamber has presented and then I followed up, I uh, read the follow up correspondence that the chamber um, has submitted uh, with our concerns after their meeting with the RCMP and I just don't know, now that it's pared down from the original proposal, um, what's the difference between this and COPP? Like besides having a, a marked vehicle, like uh, like we're creating two separate entities to uh, almost um, do the exact same thing, um, and then one COPP says their mandates to cover like the entire community, um, where the chamber uh, wants to use taxpayers' money to predominantly cover or the business section, but then the volunteers are responsible for doing the entire community, which to me almost seems backwards. If we're going to be using ratepayers money, we should be uh, spreading that throughout the entire community, not just as, as um, paying an organization or funding an organization to do a business section and then expecting volunteers to do everything. So, um, so I, right now, uh, looking at that, I, I'm having a hard time um, contributing the entire amount to this proposal. I have no issue um, maybe contributing to a, a vehicle where both um, the COPP and this organization can use. Um, but I think potentially um, the reserve money that we have here would probably be better spent on the camera project or towards the, a potential GIS unit or whatever, but 
the camera project is one that's on the go that um, um, is feasible and will uh, benefit a significant amount of people. So um, we'll see where it goes. We don't really have any comment from because uh, um, Councillor Medwood is not here tonight on on the, the uh, COPP part of it because I I don't know about that you know and I, I think there was an email but I don't remember the details of the email. Go ahead. Um, just in in looking into that too with that property forfeiture grant funding, um, what it's looking like is we're going to have to probably cover that fifty thousand first and then submit receipts too. So I think if if there is something like that, that that Chamber of Commerce group might benefit in utilizing those funds for that initial purchase, then they get their funding back and can continue on with uh, finalizing that uh, camera project. I think, I think we need to pursue one or the other, and personally, I think the camera project would probably be more beneficial just in my personal opinion uh, because like uh, Deputy Mayor Morio said the, the vehicle is very similar to the COPP program um, but I also was questioning did we do that 50,000 again this year like so we put in that initial 50 no. so it's only one okay I was just wondering about that Just for information, I do have a report to council coming on the on the forfeiture uh, program. So there's, I have the LOE or the MOU drafted. It just can't be completed until some decisions are made. I just I couldn't get that report done out today. So we will see it, well, hopefully tomorrow. For Go ahead, Cal. <clears throat> Should we be thinking of tabling this till Councilor Medway can speak on this? It's up to the council to, if they want to make a motion to the table, that's up to the council to do that. Should we read her? Well, she's not here, so I, the, the, we can't accept the email, so. Go ahead. I, I'd definitely be in favor of making that motion until she's here. Okay. Can speak on it, because I think that she has lots to say here. So okay. So motion to the table. Mm -hmm. Uh, we need a seconder, Councilor Bobbitt. Okay, so all in favor of the table? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, so then um, we should probably bring that back. Um, we typically, I guess we normally don't say a date, but we should probably bring that back for the next meeting, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, we can, yeah. Okay. That, it, it automatically goes to the next in unless... Unless otherwise stated in that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, 8.5. Resolve that the signing offices for the Town of Swan River be either Mayor Lance Jacobson or Deputy Mayor David Morio and either Chief Administrative Officer Derek Poole or Chief Financial Officer Terrence Ganita. And be it for the resolved that check signing authority be approved for Councillor Don Bobbick only in the absence of both Mayor Lance Jacobson and Deputy Mayor David Morio. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick? Do I vote on this? Uh, yeah, yeah, no problem to vote on it. All in favor? It's carried. Eight point six. Whereas the town of Swan River, along with the municipality of Swan Valley West, the rural municipality of Minnetonka's Bozeman, and the rural municipality of Mountain, have committed up to a maximum of nine thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars in additional funding to the Swan River, sorry, Swan Valley Planning District, as the portion of owner funding requ required by the Building Sustainable Communities Grant Program funding uh, to complete a new development plan on behalf of the Swan Valley. Planning District. Therefore, be resolved the Town of Swan River support the Swan Valley Planning District initiative to hire a consulting firm through a competitive bidding process who shall draft for approval an updated Swan Valley development plan. Moved by Councillor Poichat, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? 
Go ahead, uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, I would just suggest maybe a, a minor amendment um, to the resolution where it says to uh, commit it up to a maximum of nine thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars that we add each, so that it's not construed as that's the total for the four, but the maximum for each municipality for clarification purposes. So uh, the mover and the seconder have to agree? Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. I agree. Okay. So we're just going to add in a maximum of 93.75 each? I Correct. This computer is stalling on me, struggling all night. Uh, so it would just say each uh, and, and just add it in there. It would say 93.75 each in additional funding to the Swan Valley Planning District. That's pretty simple. Okay, it should be good. We we don't. I know at the AMM you have to vote on amendments, but we don't have to vote on amendments, right? Mm -hmm. No, just the mover and seconder uh, agreed to it. Yeah. Um, CFO Gadita. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was under the impression that the nine thousand three hundred seventy-five would be the cost only if the grant got approved. If the grant did not get approved, I thought the cost would be considerably more. Uh, Councillor Boychuk. It's a 50-50 grant. Like, we have to provide 50%, they provide 50% of the funding, up to that maximum, I believe. Is that is that the question you're asking, uh, CFO Gadita? Does that answer that? I, I, I was led to believe that $9,375 would be the cost to each municipality only if the grant got approved. If the grant did not get approved, the cost would probably be double to each municipality. Oh, yeah, because then we wouldn't have had the funding. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's and correct. Not... The... Sorry. Yeah, that's correct. The grant was approved. So uh, the our 50% or this planning district's 50% divided by four equally for each municipality works out to the 93.75 based on the initial soft quotes that were given. So the grant was approved? Correct. I thought it was not approved. But... No, it is approved. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Eight point seven. Whereas the town of Swan River and the municipality of Swan Valley West entered into a memorandum of understanding May 16, 2023 for the purpose of providing joint administration of fire protective services in the Swan River Valley and neighboring areas. And whereas the term of the uh, memorandum of understanding expires June 16, 2023 and both parties continue to express a desire to complete a final agreement to complete the scope of the partnership. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Town of Swan River agrees to extend the MOU beginning June 17, 2023, ending December 31st, 2023. Moved by Councillor Boycha, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Boycha. Um, should we put on the last and now for be it resolved? that the town of Swan River agrees to extend the MOU beginning June 17, 2023 and ending December 31st, 2023 until such time as the final agreement is completed or signed or executed. Or until such time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so that when it's clear that it's going to be. It could be done sooner than the right. 31st. Right, yeah. I, I don't think that hurts to have that in there. Does the mover, and the mover and the seconder agree? Yeah, I got no problem with that since I just sent the draft to the committee in Swan Valley West a couple days ago for a, a final agreement. Right. So once Derek gets the poll and a date, we might be able to hammer it out. Okay, so I'll just read the last part. 
Uh, now, therefore, be resolved that Thomas Wunderberg agrees to extend the MOU beginning June 17, 2023, and ending December 31, 2023, or until such time that the final agreement is approved and signed. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Ten, ten point one. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number three zero two nine two to number three zero three eight four, totaling eight hundred and fifty three thousand seven hundred twenty three dollars and eighty cents as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number fifty three twenty to number fifty three twenty three, totaling one hundred eleven thousand four hundred forty and seventy four cents as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling $745 as listed on Schedule C, and direct deposit payments totaling $40,061.87 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Dipper Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. Uh, check 30296. Uh, send your work on Red Freightliner. Just seemed pretty vague on what was done. I, I, I do believe it was done and I do believe that's the price, but I just, how do we accept bills when we have no descriptions on what was done? That was to do with the emissions. They were getting uh, uh, emissions codes. So you had to do repair work on that that uh, Mike wasn't able to do. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm just saying when they build they should have some explanation how he arrived at that price. Yeah, yeah, I can talk to him about that. Yeah, okay. thank you. I kind of agree with that. We should have that flag. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas the 2023 financial plan capital budget included the 100 block Centennial Drive North utility renewal $300,000 with $150,000 borne by water and sewer reserve and $150,000 borne by borrowing. And whereas the Council of the Town of Swan River wishes not to borrow but rather draw from the water and sewer reserve for the entire cost of the project and the water and sewer reserve has a balance well in excess of such costs. Therefore, it resolved that the amount equal to the cost of the 100 block Centennial Drive North Utility Renewal Capital Project be transferred from the Water and Sewer Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund upon completion of the project in accordance with Clause 168.2 of the Municipal Act. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Dipper Mayor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. Where does gas tax play? play into this. Uh, yeah, what, what do you mean by that? So, I'm under the understanding that we're doing a project in gas tax, we can, which we get from the provincial government, would cover half of this. Is that where this money is mm, coming from? Uh, this one's from no. the utility reserve. So would this project not fit gas tax? The gas tax typically we've used for paving, and then the utility reserve we've used for these projects so that, because uh, the, the meter, everything that you're charged on your meter goes to pay um, the utility projects, and then we've been saving the gas tax for paving projects. Sidewalks. And sidewalks, yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. For the discussion, all in favor? Carried. 10.3. Resolve, resolve that a grant to be made to the Communities in Bloom Swan River Committee in the amount of $6,000 as included in the 2023 financial plan. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3, or sorry, 10.4. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act, 
Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act, and whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on attached Schedule A totaling $1,157.07, therefore it be resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in the matter under subsections 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that a notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts listed being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as <coughs> for unpaid property taxes effective <coughs> July the 1st, 2023. Moved by Councillor Wojcik, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Ten point five. Resolve the business taxes owing for roll number one two two five thousand two hundred in the amount of one hundred three dollars and twenty five cents be cancelled as business operations had ceased in two thousand and twenty one. Moved by Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.1. Resulted bylaw number 5, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swanberg to amend the rules and regulations of council be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Boycha, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We have nothing for camera? Nope. All right. Don't have that yet, Councillor. <laughs> <laughs> Resolve this regular meeting of Council now be adjourned at 8.17 p.m. Moved by Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor Boycha. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you.